Killing you geeks that I'm building my dreams Filling these screens from America to Philippines And this is me now spilling the beans You say you hate to watch me but you're still in the seat That makes me cocky and you feel with defeat Because I'm the one becoming who you're not willing to be It's black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies Look at these views from cooking these foods, yeah so today's subscriber sponsored Requeezy should be pretty easy as far as the food prep goes. I have been requested to eat 10 wings with 10 different hot sauces and 10 intrusive questions, okay? So I'm just going to oil these up, salt these up, and get them into the air fryer. But uh, for all you whiny wing washers out there, yes, I did just rinse these. There's the water coming off, a little excess. But I'm just gonna pat these down dry real quick just to satisfy you so I don't have to listen to your bitching in the comments. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who's right or who's wrong. All I know is that high temperatures, which wings enter, kills any and all bacteria. That's why we used to like in the wild, why we created fire and, you know, used to, you know, kill animals in the wild and burn their fur off and burn them alive, essentially. Well, just fresh after eating them or killing them, I should say. And, you know, Everything was fine, but hey, let's just go the extra step today for you, okay? So, washed wings. We got oil, canola, my favorite when it comes to really anything, to be honest. Pop that in there. Now, the reason I do canola on these before they go into the air fryer is because it gets it closer to being almost like a deep fry, right? That's why I like it. Okay, salt in. Why are we salting? To help pull moisture and make crispy. Quick little whipper snapper here, and then we're gonna set the air fryer to as high as she goes. Mine goes 400, and we're going in for 40 minutes. Power on, 400, 40 minutes. Now you might wanna check it at 35 just in case, but in my experience, 40 minutes has been pretty much perfect. Into the basket, sort them out, give them some room to breathe, and we go in. Okay, so the hardest part about today's video, aside from answering these 10 intrusive questions, will probably be having to handle the heat. Now, I bought this hot sauce flavors of the world. There are, how many do we have here? 50, I think? No. We got six times Six. So, or six times five. So we have 30 hot sauces here. I'm gonna have to go through and pick a lineup essentially, and I want to build like a a gradual lineup. So when I get my lineup done, I'll show you what I've chosen. I present to you my 10 sauce lineup. So from left to right, we have the garlic del fuego. We got the bourbon pepper hot sauce, Chuck's famous buffalo style hot sauce. We got the Hala Green, Smokin' Jamaican, Stay Golden, California, Hawaiian Lava, my Outback is burning, I just like the name of that, Indian Tiger Blood, and we're gonna end it with Death Valley Rattler Hot Sauce. So, there's my lineup, and I'm going to individually toss in each, and then maybe add a little droplet to each as I bite, but this is gonna cost me a lot of bowls and a lot of bowl washing. Okay, so, Wings are done, nice and golden. Time to power sauce. And I told you, this would cost me a lot of bowls. And they're all mix and match. But we'll get her figured. We got 10. Okay, in order. Garlic, bourbon, buffalo, hala, luya, a dab will do ya. And then we Oprah it. You get a win. 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 All right, tossy time. Tossy and saucy. All right, our tray is laid, displayed, and ready to be played. Already wrapping, and we haven't even started. So there it is. They're all sauced. All ten sauces. Ready to roll. Let's get into this. All right, yo, welcome to today's subscriber sponsored request. It's a twist, a take, a genius one by Amber Copley. Shout out to Amber Copley for concocting this uh, little hot ones experiment. Well, I have to answer maybe, well, yes, 
kind of, they're a little intrusive. They're not the most intrusive, but they're kind of intrusive. Some intrusive questions, 10 of them. I'll eat 10 wings with 10 different hot sauces. And uh, if I fail due to heat, I have to wrap. But uh, let's just say that I'll probably fulfill that request regardless. I've been spitting hot fire bars up in my closet since I was 16, okay? So, you know, you don't have to really tempt me with that one. Anyways, so uh, Amber, very generous on the dono, but at the same time, hot sauce is very expensive and getting 10 of them does add up. So I'm ready to get into this. I have the questions just kind of point formed. Uh, I selected 10, well, there's a little more than 10. There's like probably 15 in general, but uh, just have them kind of point formed so they won't be the exact wording, but you know, the idea is there. Anyways, I brought some ice and a chocolate, uh, milk beverage because you know milk and spice and everything nice and i'm the type of weirdo who likes chocolate milk on ice i love it like i always drink it on ice um personally for me it's like it's kind of like a milkshake but not right it's just cold chocolatey dairy product that is delicious so a little sip to get us kicked off before my mouth gets ticked off by all this shit in front of me but let's go So good oh my god i've been on a chocolate milk kick lately too like crazy been loving it okay we got our full sender and we have the uh vodka sodi in the uh in the sled cup ready to take off zero to 60. it is a friday and uh i just wanted to bring a little buzzy energy to this so let's read a question and eat a wing for for question one wing one so the first question will be how have i changed since doing youtube and th and they basically say like for the better so this is wing one with the garlic hot sauce and uh, it doesn't look all that saucy they've been sitting a little bit here but that's how they do it on hot ones it, the, the hot ones wings never look saucy Mmm, that is delicious. That is really good. Holy. Oh my god, that's so good. Just garlicky, vinegary. Very delicious. So, how have I changed? Possibly for the better. I think I have changed, obviously. We all change with time. We also definitely change with experience. Um, so by default, of course, I've changed. I've changed my setting. I've changed my cameras. I've changed a lot of things. You guys have seen the progression. Um, I want to say if for the better, I want to say yes. Um, mainly because I feel like YouTube and this space has taught me to be more considerate of people and like try, uh, it's me, it's, it's forced me into being less judgmental as a human. We all have to use our judgment every day for survival. Essentially it's like a, it's a mechanism, survival mechanism. Just, we have to make judgment calls every day, but there's like ugly judgment and then there's like required survival judgment and like we all fit the, fall victim to ugly judgment right we snap judge people and uh that's like the, like the, to like the type of toxic stuff that i talk about like what i was talking about the other day is like just on youtube like drama and conflict begets you know views and attention and i just i don't want any part of that world but I'd love to thrive and like, you know, make money and stuff, but I want to make money through authenticity and things that I love. And uh, like, I don't want to be sucked into that. So I, I, I just stayed away from it being like, I can succeed in another way. And then that led me into like having like, like a, like a dope loving community, people I engage with and just like, I don't know, hearing other people's stories in my inbox and stuff. It just like, it's taught me to be like a better more considerate, like more patient with, with my judgments 
type person, right? Like, I feel like it's so easy to go the negative, ugly route rather than expending energy to understand, like, the root, the source of a problem, like the source of a person's situation, we'll, we'll call it. So I think it's made me better in that regard. And then, of course, like, just <clears throat> getting to fulfill my vision it gives me like this motivation and incentive. So it's like, it makes me better in terms of executing, of showing up in consistency. And like, it's teaching me that in life. It's teaching me like, okay, in order to get something you really want, you really have to show up for yourself every day, or at least most of the days, like 85%. So that's my answer to that. And right there, right there, it's been happening, 444. I tell you guys, the angel numbers are so fucking real, right? It's giving me, oh, uh, chills, chills. I'm having an chill. I've been seeing 444, 111, 222, 555, 53, 1111, like, and right when I pick it up in that moment of, like, me having that thought, boom, it's right there, 444. I've been having that lately. It's so crazy. It's like, anytime I have a thought relative to, like, my vision and my goals and me trying to make a decision... I just, I go to look at the clock and boom, it's like, it's, it's always there. It's like some triple numbers. And I'm just like, uh, like it's so weird. And I'm not even like horoscope and like that. I'm not like that, but like it, that shit is fucking real lately. So that's trippy. Okay. A little vodka. Yo, that was a real ass moment caught on camera. Fuck man. That's like, makes me emotional. Um, Okay. <laughs> Perfect for the next wing. Are we in a simulation? And this is the bourbon pepper hot sauce. So are we in a simulation? Oh, this is where the smoky is coming from. Very smoky. Um, I want to say like yes, but I also want to say no. My whole thing about why I would say yes to the simulation is like everything is binary one zero. So light, dark birth, death, sun, moon, uh, there are so many binary things in this world. And I don't want to get into gender like that. And what you identify as, but from the way I see it, a penis is a one, a vagina is a zero, one goes into zero, it spits shit in there, an egg comes, and you make life. That's some one zero shit. Like, it's, that's real. It can't be debated. It is what it is. How you identify as a person, that's on you. I, like, if you think because you have a vagina, you're, like, if you don't identify with your vagina, your penis, your body, that's probably just because you're having a transcendent experience, realizing that your consciousness occupying a vessel experience a human, a human life. Um, <laughs> but you're probably too afraid to admit, like, you want to, you, you want to cling to an identity or, or, or you want to, like, construct an identity. So you want to get mad at, at the fact that there's penises and vaginas. Like, you're just, you're, you're ultimately just, uh, you're scared to admit that you don't like identify with what you are. And that is just consciousness of occupying a vessel, having a human experience, collecting experiences. And you're here to like, to, to learn, grow like wisdom, all those things. So I feel like that's a pro real big problem in society today. I could go so deep into that, but I won't because I got to keep moving. But, um, the thing about what makes me believe we're not in a simulation is like, I feel like the experience of, like if we're in a simulation, I, I feel like it would, it would be more, more immediate. It would be like, you just got, like pop into existence in a final form, but we come in like through a very raw, visceral, animalistic, biological way where like you're coming out of your mom and like doctors and dads and ah, and they're passing out and like, it's just blood and guts and gore. And then it's like, Oh baby in a swaddle. And then, and then from there, like you go through like these stages of, of like evolution and you, and you grow into final form and then you decay and pass. And that to me seems too like, if we're going to use the word nature or natural, like that's what that seems like. It just seems too like it, you know what I mean? It's too progressive and raw and like, I, I feel like a simulation would be more clean and concise because that's what, how computers are. It's like computers are just like, 
like it, everything's like clean concise and just i don't know that and that's how i feel about that but there's definitely a, a one zero light dark binary god devil thing to life so there's that okay going off the rails here uh next question is would you rather find true love and be poor or rich and alone forever this is the buffalo sauce um good sauce i've been i found true love i wasn't ready for it per se whole nother video um and i was poor during that time as well so true love and poor didn't work out for me it's not that, it's not all that it's cracked up to be in my opinion And I personally don't exactly subscribe to uh, as who I am. Now, it could be for other people. That's cool. But I don't really subscribe to the, 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 the idea of standard relationships, monogamy, marriage, all that stuff. I think that's kind of antiquated at this point. Um, I'm a millennial. I'm, 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 a, I'm a product of divorce. And it's like 60% of my generation is. I think we're going away from religion and the church and all those antiquated things, those ideas, those concepts, science is kind of taking over. And um, I just, I think my generation has seen time and time again, like that the marital situation like doesn't work. It's like, it's not, it's not the answer. It's not the ticket. Like more, more than average, like more than 50% of people are getting divorced. So it's like, what does that say? So I'm, I'm on the path of, of self-actualization getting myself into a financial situation where I feel like really capable. And then if at that point that's intriguing to me, if I want to have a wife and settle down and I want to have a child, then I will, because I'll be set to do that. I'll be set up and ready to do that. And it'll feel more authentic to me right now in my life. It's just not that. And I'm a man. So I, I have the luxury of that choice because I can create a kid whenever I want right? I had, there's no, there's no time limit on my seed. Whereas with women, there's a time limit with their womb. So, um, it's like, for me, I'm just, maybe I'll graduate to that point in my life where I feel that way, but I, it won't be until I see through what I need to see through to get myself into a position to, to provide properly for both wife and child. You know what I mean? But I don't necessarily think I'll ever I personally can intuitively feel I'll never end up there, but uh, that's just me. Okay. So furthest I've been from home, favorite place in the U S this is the Hala. I'm intrigued, intrigued to try this because it's a green sauce. Furthest I've been from home is Dominican. Um, with my ex. It was a terrible time, not because of the Dominican, because of me. I was a mess relative to anxiety, uh, dissociative personality like situations. The entire trip, I felt like I was clinging to my, my life for my life due to anxiety disorder. And, um, You know, that always weighs heavy on me because we went for like her, th her birthday and I just, I feel like I, ru I just, I ruined everything and I always, I feel like I want to make it up to her at some point in the future. Also, many more videos on that. We still talk a little bit here and there, not like a lot, but it's just like, I want to write that wrong. You know, I don't know. I just, I feel like I just, I ruined that trip and. It wasn't because I was intentionally doing it. It's just I was I was in such a bad place. But um, the the best or my favorite place in America, I should say, is I'll always have to say um, like Duluth, Minnesota, mainly because I live like forty minutes from the border, 
and just like since a kid I've been going down there for many reasons but uh I just have so many wholesome good memories like just going on little trips to Duluth and just walking around the like, canal park and eating down there and like and then as I got older it turned into like me and my dad going down for motocross and there's like a, an amazing track that we ride outside of Duluth and it's like it's just it's it's just there's so many good memories in Duluth but I, I've been in a lot of places in America but like it doesn't ha have the same attachment of memories but uh I guess outside of that like Florida I went riding in Florida with my dad it was amazing and in Cali too so you gotta shout out those so next question do I see marriage and children in my future slash the biggest fear in my life? Smoking Jamaica. I kind of already answered that. The marriage and children. So take from that what you will. Biggest fear in my life, and it kind of ties into the to, to the marriage and children is is just not self actualizing my vision. What I feel as my purpose, my potential. Once again, that is definitely smoky. I don't want to, basically what I'm saying is I don't want to die with my song inside. And for me, that's quite literal. I have a lot of songs and music that I am, like, I have them ready. It's just I need to, like, create and put them in, I need to, I need to give my internal blessings to the world. And I need to, I want to say everything that I have to say artistically before I go. So my biggest fear in life is to not self-actualize, to not give everything that I've been given to the world as a co-creator of this world. Because when you are, I don't know if you're if you're creative or an artist or whatever or you have something to say like you, you co-create this existence by putting out your energy to it right so my channel wouldn't exist if i didn't do it and make it so i'm a co-creator of, of the world that we all are right if you have something inside you have a calling you go towards it because you give it to to the world it's your gift to give to the world that's your purpose that's that's and then when you when you move towards it, that's success. You know, when it starts to materialize in the physical plane, that's what success is. So before I go, my biggest fear is to not do everything that I feel like I'm supposed to. You know, I'd be on my deathbed being like, I have unfinished business. That's why they say like ghosts have unfinished business. Like they didn't get to do what they're supposed to do while they were here. So. Next one. What has your favorite job been? This is the California Dreamin'. Um, interesting. To be honest, I haven't talked much about it on this channel, but working at the Blue Jays, selling beer. So good. So fucking fun. I don't know how that job found me or I found that job, but... Just so relaxed, coolest people. You're just slinging beer in a, in a, in an in an area where people are just having fun, getting drunk, spending money, watching their favorite thing in real life, and just making buku cash. Like now, buku cash is like. A relative term, but for, for the standard civilian human living in the basic fucking, you know, working life, the working man cash, like for me to make like, <laughs> what, a thousand, twelve hundred dollars in a weekend in just tips, right? Like, come on, that shit is crazy. Those were in the golden days, but we're not in those days anymore. The, uh, it slowed down, but like it was, you can't argue with that. Like I paid my rent plus 
in a week in a weekend now it's seasonal and but but you know what i mean it's like there's 30,000 50,000 people when the beer just sells itself you just stand there with it you oh like give me give me give me give me give me like and then there's all and they're not tipping lots it's two bucks two bucks two bucks two bucks two bucks because they don't have to leave their seat right they don't have to miss any of the game two bucks two, two bucks at a few hundred beers adds up mad quick so it was just it's the funnest job the best job. Okay. <laughs> this question got me going. How many guys have you kissed? And I picked this question because it's actually funny. Hawaiian lava. Because it's a few. And here's why. I found myself in a... If you've ever watched American Pie, I don't know which one it is. I think maybe the second, second or third, when they're sneaking into the house and they're in, in like the lesbian house and there's the dildos and all that, and they get caught in the house, they're painting the house. Similar story, but I was like, I don't know, 19. And we were getting drunk with hot, with like, Equal equal parts hot girls. And of course, the patriarchy at its best. Um, <laughs> fuck. Uh, we had rules on the table. We were playing like adult spin the bottle, right? Drunk. So it was like, if it was like, you land on a girl, you just get to make out with the girl and whatnot. And maybe there was some titties involved and things like that but that's whatever um but they had to be a little more ridiculous but with the dudes it was like if you if you dude on dude if you land on dude <laughs> you have to uh kiss a dude in order for us to like have that advantageous position now i i realize that that's the patriarchy in, in a nutshell. Don't get it twisted. I'm, I'm aware. That's kind of fucked up. Um, but like. We would have to. Get basically. Just like deeply peck. Like no, no tongue. But like not just a either. Like a, like a like a. Like a solid smooch if you will. <laughs> and. Uh, I was like. Fuck it. I'm comfortable with who I am and my sexuality. I know that this isn't this kiss with my friend isn't going to turn me on to any degree, but I do want to see some shit with you and you and you if y'all land on each other. So in that game of spin the adult bottle, I did have to kiss uh like two or three two or three <laughs> and it was whatever. It was just kissing. It was no big deal. And also my dad used to kiss me on the mouth growing up my whole life and it was cool up until I was like 11 or 12 and then I was like okay dad this is getting a little weird now here's the thing my dad's dope he just loved me and loved having kids uh but at a certain point I got uncomfortable and I had to tell him I was like I don't think we should be doing this anymore you and I and he was like okay but you're still gonna hug me right I was like yes I'll hug you until your deathbed dad but like at a certain point like I'm 12 I'm getting boners now so it's like you can't like expect me to like it's getting it's just your lips on mine is getting a little much okay so we need to we need we need to draw back we need to chill on that okay where do i draw musical inspiration and do i have any famous chefs that i look up to we ain't getting too hot by the way so the wrap's looking good um Where do I draw musical inspiration? Right here. In this cup. It's the alcohol for me. See what it is? It's X amount of alcohol. Not too much. Just enough. Shifts me into like receiving antenna zone. Loose enough to not be too considerate about the world. 
and just open enough to be receiving like my higher messages. And those messages to me are usually in the form of like melodic rhythm or, or, or words or verbiage or whatever, throw on a beat, boom, next thing we know we're cooking. So, or create a beat, whatever, same difference. Although I'm not the most skilled at that. I'm more skilled at like the creation of like the writing and things like that, but it's flow state. It's just flow state. I feel like I'm in it right now, to be honest with you. This, this video might feel a little different because like a couple drinks deep, this is, I just, I activate. So I find it in there and then as far as chefs that inspire me go, not really uh, anybody. I can't think of anybody off top and, and here's why, because I'm not inspired like to chef. Like I don't, I'm not into like chefing per se. Um, I, I, like I enjoy food in that, but the thing about chefing is I feel like chefing is very, and this is like a theme I've had in my mind about my channel and stuff is like a lot of YouTube ch channels succeed because, because they specialize and they have a, a definite thing to offer and it's, it's a knowledge based thing. But like, I don't want to be a, like, I want to be a, a professional vibe. Like if I'm really good at a couple things and my vibe is accompanied by professionalism like I know how to execute that's cool to me but I personally hate things that are contrived and I I, I personally feel like teaching though a, a noble cause a good thing to do because people need to be you know directed at times for me it feels contrived because I don't want to be I don't want to be labeling myself as as like I know better than you or I'm you know what I mean? Like I'm ahead. I'm ahead. The fuck was that? Or like I'm ahead of you, or or anything like that. Like I just, I just want to do the thing that I fuck with. I want to do it well, and I want the person on the other end to receive that energy of just like the chill approach to doing things, like in an awesome, dope way. Like that's more my energy. Is like that. Like I don't, I don't like being like, hey, hi, I'm Joe Shimoda, like, and I'm here to tell you how to do this today, and like, da 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 da, -da and follow this, follow that, because that's not who I am, I'm very, like, fluid and malleable, like, I don't live in the box of, like, of, 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 the, of, of rules and being told what to do, that's exactly what I'm trying to not do by doing this channel and being me, right, like, I, I don't ever want to live a life that feels confined like that, so I don't want a channel that feels confined like that. So she'll just, I guess I'll end that there, but I just like, okay. So any chef who just like, is like almost freestyling it or is just really like down to earth, chill and cool for me, Jamie Oliver is kind of like that guy. He's a TV guy, but he's chill. He's easy. He's, 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 he's open to the idea that like, you know, you have a family and like, it could be this, it could be that you may have this, you may not have that. He knows his shit, but he's like, not like, like Gordon Ramsay's like, all right, Wrong, on yes this that you have to oh eh, ah but like he's changed over time a little bit he's mellowed out a bit but he's very like french to the point and the point is like matters so there's that anyways to the next one strangest place i ever did the deed and this is the tiger blood so strangest place i ever did the deed I have two places that immediately come up. And those could be stories for another time. But in trees, by a fence, open to the street, in public, between <laughs> dinner and dessert at one of my friend's weddings. Weddings create the pheromones. You just get horny at the wedding or and this might be the strangest i think it wins in a walk-in fridge at a restaurant very sketchy a little cold a lot of fun 
very exciting. <laughs> but all stories that you can see on the Patreon that I'm going to be starting. Not not me here announcing I'm starting a 18A, um, you know, OnlyFans for my life stories in mind Patreon in the future here. It's happening. I've already made the page. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll wait for a release date, but it's happening. And then the last one is Death Valley. And the last question is my most embarrassing moment. Hmm, that's different. Not as hot as I thought it would be with Death Valley being in the name, but um, most embarrassing moment. Hard to pick one. A lot of them. But probably both embarrassing, but very like awakening to my awareness of my, myself and my mind. I'm not going to go into do too deep of a detail because once again, it's just so long to elaborate. It's a whole story. But um, in grade seven, I had this teacher who was very like revolutionary in my mind, influential to me. And she did this weird fucked up thing. I don't know if teachers should even be allowed to do this, but she sat us down in a circle, like a, like a feelings circle one day where we we're all faced with each other. And she basically was like, we're going to go around the circle today. And you all get to talk about who has made you feel like, you know, kind of bad about yourself or whatever. Like just someone who's like really been abrasive towards you. And my name plus other names mentioned were were uh a trending theme and mine kind of being in the forefront of those names and you know my eyes were just wide awake at the time i just I, like in that moment i just i had to go home and sit with myself and be like that's how i make like people feel like i was like that's really crazy so i i, I had to really like introspect and look at myself and and be like I realized in that moment, it's like, I don't want to be, the, I don't, like, I didn't, and I didn't think I was being that way to people, right? Like, I didn't have that awareness about myself. So I had to introspect and, and consider, and and that was, like, a defining moment in my life about, you know, how I want to be as a person moving forward. So that teacher was very influential to me, and she changed me and a lot about me and a lot about like I in that moment I could just I could see more clearly about how I'm supposed to be rather than how I was and uh, that's a big story though that's that's a whole story once again I want to do it on the Patreon because YouTube's uh I want I want to uh, to build a safe space and a community where it's like I can say anything and everything that I want but YouTube has unfortunately become super censored because it's a business platform now. Let's just be honest. Was, that's, that is what it is. So, I didn't, you know, not eat them all. All very delicious. But now we have to wrap. Okay, so let's get into that. <laughs> all right, so I got Garage Band on here. And over, over the years, I've just <laughs> randomly been making beats. I actually made this simple loop back in Toronto like years ago. I was on the subway just like on my way to work trying to make a beat. And uh, this is literally two components. It's literally a piano with drums. But it has become one of my favorite little beats to throw on and like freestyle and, and, and cook up ideas to sometimes. So it's, uh, it's, a, little bit, it's, a, little, it's a little New York East Coast mob beat. Type vibe. East Coast Mob Deep. New York shit. <laughs> well, let's start this feast out with some matcha sticks. And when I'm done with those, it's over to the lobster bisque. 
since it's soup, I'm gonna need a box of Ritz. And for dessert, I like the cookies with the chocolate chips. I love drinking vodkas and sipping soft drinks and slipping the tips of pizza and a dipping sauces. I'm nauseous cause I always overeat though. Dorito, crawfish, taco, and burrito, Frito, Lay's chips, eat those with the Wave Ridge, original flavor, and they made for the ranch dip. Shit, I'm in the whip in the drive through That chick was a bitch, hope she didn't spit in my food. I got my eyes glued on eggs and ham. Matter of fact, I'd rather have steak and yams. Scratch that, I'll find dine with a leg of lamb. Bacon wrap, scallops, a salad, and a plate of clams. Oh. Parmesan like a grated man, nothing you could say to him, hold up, I play the win, load up that plate again, cold cuts and catered things, donuts, potato skins, soak nuts and baby shrimp, uh, you can simp, I'm a state of pimp, tipping all these waiters, fuck you haters, I'm the greatest and the ladies man, hmm, yeah that makes you mad, cause I sunned you, but I ain't your dad, no, no, I ain't your daddy yo, you been acting bratty though, I been kicking back, sipping jack, just relaxed on a patio, yo, yeah that how that go, mm, okay, why? Cause I'm just a guy on YouTube and you hate on me just to justify what you do or don't do. You crusty guys are doo doo, busting lies, trying to customize the true ooh. Yeah, but you must oblige a guru. I flush my 9 to 5. Yeah, what the fuck did you do? Huh? Absolutely zero. You're acting like a year old and you cap about the Nero. Killing you geeks that I'm building my dreams. Filling these screens from America to Philippines. And this is me now spilling the beans. You say you hate to watch me, but you're still in the seat. That makes me cocky and you feel with defeat Because I'm the one becoming who you're not willing to be And that's on me Easy So that will conclude that one Until the next one You know what to do Eat good, live well And stay true